So welcome to the second video in this piano tuning course series of videos. As I mentioned in the last video, I'm not a professional tuner, which is a good thing because that means that you too can learn to tune your own piano. And if I can be trusted to tune this very expensive seven foot Ebach concert grand with ivory keys, then you can do it as well. Now I am a professional musician and I have been doing this for a long time, but I didn't have any courses to do it. I've just kind of learned over time by asking lots of questions and even talking to piano tuners. And I've never broken a string and the piano's always been in excellent condition and people are always commenting in my videos how great the piano sounds. That's because it's always in tune. I'm literally tuning it and doing spot tuning like every two weeks. The piano was just moved into this location. It's a new, new house for me. It's not in its permanent spot, so I'll have to do this again in about a month when it's moved into the studio itself. But in the last video, we learned about the tools that we needed. We got a tuning hammer. We've put our mute strips in and we learned how to tune single notes using this app called Piano Meter. Love this little application. It works really, really well. And it's certainly all you need to tune the piano. And we did three notes. We did C, D flat, and D. Now what we're gonna do is once that's done, and typically what I would do is I would tune the middle string of this whole row, except for these two strings here, which straddle this line. So what you wanna do for those is you wanna your little, one of your little rubber mutes here, and you wanna put it between the first two strings to tune the string on the outside. So that's the last string to the right for that particular note. Now there's reason why we're doing this because we can't put the mute strip in there to tune the middle note first. So we're gonna tune this one first, which is B. And you can see that the tuning app automatically found B4. And we can see that it's a little bit flat. So again, short jerky movements to set the pin. and then a couple of whacks to even out the tension. And then we've gone too far, so we need to back it off a little bit. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get it where you want it to be. Then on the other side of this, you're gonna mute the two strings to the right by sticking it right in the middle of those. And that's the C natural. And you're gonna tune the string far to the left. Now what you'll notice is when you first hit the note, because the note is stretching tighter and then it backs off. So the, basically the note stretches out after it's being played and goes flat. And you want to get it tuned when it's after the note has stopped. There we go. And then whack it a couple of times, make sure that it doesn't move. Good, bang on. Okay, so now what we need to do is once you've tuned the middle string of that whole strip, what you do now is you go down and you remove the first mute strip from the first C that we started on. And now we have to tune what's called the unison. So we tuned the middle string, now what we need to do is tune the string to the left. Now. You can't really do this with the piano meter because it's listening to two strings at the same time. So what you need to do is listen to the vibration. So let me make it really severe. I'm gonna... So you hear that? 
pretty simple to hear. That's what you don't want. What you want is no vibration at all, no wavelengths to separate the two notes. Now, there's no vibration left, but you'll notice that I whacked it pretty hard. And that's what you want. There's a long vibration, but it's okay. I could work on it a little bit more, but let's go to the other side of the note. And when you do the other side, you're gonna take a mute rubber and you're gonna stick it on the other side of your C here to mute the left string and then we're going to tune the right string. And then remove the mute. And your notes should sound good. I still think that bottom note is a little bit out of tune. There we go. Then when you get to the D flat, same procedure. Now, sometimes you won't need to tune them. In this case, that sounds pretty good. Let's put the mute in on the left and tune the right string. That one also sounds pretty good. Then what I do is I, Play a few notes to clear my ears and then try it again. And what I'm listening for again is that or and the closer it's in tune it's going to go slower and slower like that. And what you want when you're done is none of that. And then Moving on to the next note, again the mute strip is already out for the left note, so let's just tune that one. Let's back it off to show it really out of tune. Hear that? Again, you don't want to just turn the hammer. You want to jerk it so that you feel the pin move slightly. And again, as it gets closer in tune, it's a little bit harder to hear, but that sounds pretty good. Let's remove the right mute strip and then put our rubber mute in on the left side here and tune the right string. That actually sounds pretty good. Okay, one thing we're gonna try right now is we're gonna do some spot tuning as if we were tuning a single note. So what I'm gonna do is go way up here. I'm gonna move my piano meter app up here just so that it's closer to the notes so it can hear it a little bit better. And automatically, it picked out C6. And you can see that that note all in general is really flat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick our mute strips in on or our mute rubbers in on either side of that note just to tune the middle note. And the middle one's actually bang on. So that means it's one of the outer strings or both of them. Now with this high up, it's gonna be really, really hard 
to hear the vibrations because they're going to be super fast. Let me make it really out of tune so you can hear it. Now the other thing you can do is you can actually tune one note at a time by using piano meter. And you can see that it's a little sharper than the first note. Remember, the shorter the strings get, the harder it is to tune them because there's not a lot of string to tune. So the hammer or the pin moves very, very little. That's why it's really tough to tune in the upper register. And you don't want to crank large movements because you're going to end up breaking your strings, which I've never done because the tiny jerky movements are the best. That looks pretty good. Let's hear them both together. That sounds good. Let's try the right one. Whack it a few times. Again, it's really important to bounce off that note and make sure that it evens out the tension of the string in the middle because it's being held in several spots. Like, do you see this bridge here? There's space in here on the other side, right? And you want to even out the tension there between there and the string and here as well from the bridge. Okay, so then in our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to tackle some of the lower notes, which are going to be a lot easier to tune and there's some things to pay attention to there. When you get down in the lower register down here, some of the notes only have two strings and some of the notes only have one. So that's going to be a pleasure just to tune that down there. I'm going to tell you though, it's really hard to hear with your ears and that's where Piano Meter, this wonderful little app, is going to come in handy. Thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next tuning tutorial. Thanks so much.